what's the message of your drag? Like, why, why do you do this, essentially? For me, it's sort of like carrying on these stories of our queer past and how they have always been, like, erased from us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have always been here. Trust me. I had literally... I had done my research. So honestly, doing drag is kind of like an embodiment of all that power and femininity for me. That's why I do drag. So yeah. <laughs> Excuse the mess, don't judge me. Don't have a depiction of Pythia, no. Um, she was like a priestess, right? Yeah. So people just respect her. She yeah. was blessed by the god of art, Apollo, and uh, she had so much political yeah. power in the ancient times. Yeah. You know, I want to claim this energy of this powerful feminine figure of yeah. my culture yeah. and just kind of like go full force and like revive her and just yeah. carry through that energy in the future. I love femininity and yeah. I don't think it should be um, feared or yeah. suppressed, obviously. So I'm Pythia and I'm the gender bending clown Grecian goddess of your nightmares. <laughs> I identify as non-binary. Gender is fake. Like, gender is cancelled. It's 2021. Get with the times. My drag style is so out of this world, I'm gonna bring things that you have never seen before. Guaranteed. Your drag, it's... I mean, it's obviously playing with gender and saying lots about gender and, like, yeah. and like disrupting, like, certain kinds of femininity. Of course. Because, like we said, like, yeah. I can do a full femme makeup and yeah. just still have my hairy body out and yeah. still perform a feminine song or maybe a masculine song. It, yeah. it really doesn't matter because... If you really come down to it, you know, gender is fake. And like you said, it is kitschy to say, but it is fake. It's, it is mm -hmm. a construct that people have created. And that's totally okay. It works for some people and mm -hmm. it doesn't for some others. Mm -hmm. Lover and Cox. Yeah. Yeah, it's the very first, like, trans Barbie. Ami oh my God, amazing. Isn't that so cool? See, I remodeled her into the big oh, wow. bimbo. <laughs> like, I sculpted <laughs> some boobs. I gave her, like, a bit of a lip job. I made her a little outfit. Tell me about this look. Yes, okay, well, I've had this concept in my mind for super long. It's sort of like a little bit of a love story. Basically, this Luna moth falls in love with a lamb because, you know, they're attracted to light. And basically, had this idea, maybe they can do like a little romantic tango moment. And at the end of the day, she like takes off his lampshade and goes to kiss him, but then ends up frying herself and dying. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a little sad, tragic love story, but you know, the Greeks invented tragedy, so here we are. A metaphor for so much in life. Right? You know, sometimes the things you love the most are just not good for you. It's just going to be fun to translate into a sort of drag look, making it furry, fuzzy, sparkly. Definitely. Isn't she literally a She's drag queen? She's gorgeous. Look at her. She's, She's gorgeous. Stunning. <laughs> It feels like every character that you do has a story to tell. Yes. Like even how you like the way you described her, you were like, "This is her story." Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All drag is valid. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I'm not really into just throwing on a bodysuit mm -hmm. and some human hair and like performing Ariana Grande at the bar. Yeah. And that's totally okay. That's so entertaining. Yeah. And I love to see it. Yeah. When I go out, I love to see it. I love to see the splits, the the hair flips, and all that. Yeah. But. I, I love more the theatricality and the artistry of drag, mm -hmm. and that's why I do what I do, so. Oh, who is she? Where does your inspo for like looks normally come from? Honestly, I love taking inspiration from fables and stories and mythology and religion and nature and things that I see around me and sort of making it, you know, queer and drag yeah. and fashion. It's, it's kind of really cool to reclaim these parts of history that have kind of erased us, okay. <laughs> but yeah. Do you do this with every look where you sketch it out? Yeah, basically everything. I have a whole sketch pad. I do like some digital drawings as well. It's like, I'm a very visual person in a way. Yes. So I really need to put things down in paper. My degree is in costume design. Mm -hmm. I went to the National Theatre School of Canada here in Montreal, actually. And I like putting things into shape so I can see what they're going to look like. How did you learn everything? Because you have to kind of be, as a drag queen, you have to be sort of a master of... All trades. All trades. And a jack of none, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, since I was a child, I just loved creating things. I really just taught myself everything. Like, I taught myself how to draw. I've been doing it forever. I never yeah. had a proper schooling. I basically make everything. And I guess drag, in a way, allows me to be the 
the whole orchestra. I get to, you know, be the writer, the producer, the director, the orchestra, the actor, yeah. like the designer and everything all in one. And I have full reins and control over my art, so. Today, we're gonna go source some of these materials. Yeah, I love the fabric stores at Chabanel and Saint Hubert. They're like the fashion district. They have embellishments, jewelry, rhinestones, feathers, zippers, fabrics, everything. So I'm very excited. Buddy! Hello. And then I'm also looking for the white fur, this one exactly. Basically for the bodice, it would be just like a white fuzz, kind of okay. like this I'm seeing. I think I want to play with some textures today, okay. like some furs, maybe like some short furs, long furs, yes. That's it. That's it, 100%. Oh my god, okay. Perfect, perfect. It'll be really cool, I'm excited. Hey, this matches pretty well. Okay. I think she's the one, and it has okay. a bit more stretch than the other one. Okay. It's fine, I lift now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amazing. Hello. Hello. Bonjour, ça va bien? Oh, wait. This is here? Oh, hey, yeah. yeah. I kind of love that it's a little bit holographic. Mm. Let's see it together. Mm. This is really cool. And look how stretchy it is. Good eye. Thank oh my you. God. Oh my <laughs> I'm like, I literally walked right past it. And when I go shopping, I take my colored rendering and I can like color match and I can find the fabrics that match the best. And I think I'll go with this. When I see it, I understand how many meters of fabric I'll need, how many colors, how many, what textures, what kind of stretch. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of get to know the bike experience. I'm not sure how much I would need for the wings. And most of the time, I'm able to create it exactly as I draw it. Oh, it's really cool. There you go. Cool, that was successful. Just like, boom. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> this is what we need, in yellow. Okay. For that kind of, I knew they would have it here. It's paradise. <laughs> the drag queen's so paradise. paradise, literally. <laughs> <laughs> These are like perfect, like the little antenna. They're perfect. Won't they be so wow. cute? Wow. <laughs> I may get like four and stack them to make the antenna. How fun they are. Yeah, cream, I think. Very pro. <laughs> okay, yeah, that'll work. So white zipper, snaps I have, black rentals I have, and thread, yes. So that will be all for me today. Thank you, thank you so much. Amazing, very, very great finds. I'm yes. How are you? Yes, I'm making like a little moth costume. So oh, nice. it's like her little antennas. That's awesome. Yeah, Perfect. amazing. Good. Yes. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> So it's been a month and a half since we last saw Pythia. She's been working on her Luna Moth garment. It's gonna be so cute. And tonight, we're gonna see it. She's opening for Sasha Velour, one of the biggest names in drag at the MTELUS Theater. We're on our way. Honestly, so stoked, can't wait. This is Emiliano's first drag show, which is unreal that he gets to see Sasha Velour in his first drag show. So jealous. I can't, I can't. All right, so she's around back. I think I see her. Vithia! You look amazing. You look cool. Let's do it, come on. Let's go. Oh, I'm just down this way. Hey, I'm Fen. Nice to meet you. Enchanté. Welcome, enchanté. Should we, can we follow you yeah, into... Yeah, yeah. Okay. You should do denim, actually. I wanna, yeah, I want to do denim. Nice to meet you. You're denim and you're lamp man? Yes. <laughs> so denim. You're part of Pythia's drag family. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pythia's kind of like my fairy drag mother. Like Pythia has also like influenced my drag so much and like taught me so much of what I know. <gasps> Pythia, it's, it's amazing. Oh my God. It'll look good on stage, I promise you. Let's get these hands. It does. Let's do it. Okay. The transformation begins. Yeah. I'm like so nervous, but like super excited. She's been my idol forever, you know, since I, I've been a little baby queen. So it's kind of crazy that I get to share this stage with her. I'm just like so proud of her to see her literally living her dream right now. I'm like very happy for her. <laughs> I love doing makeup. Yeah? Why? I don't know, I was like, I was a makeup artist before this actually. And like, 
I love the transformation mm -hmm. of makeup in film and theater. I love to see how, you know, actors would transform into these creatures and everything. And it was always like such a big mystery and obsession of mine. And I feel like with drag, I kind of get to do that, you know, because I can transform into whatever I want with makeup. What does it feel like to be on stage? <gasps> oh my God, I love it. It's my favorite thing. I don't know, to be honest with you, like a lot of the times I just kind of like black out. Mm. I don't know. Like I literally black out, but it's like in a good way. It's literally like a Dionysian ecstasy for me. I don't know, it's like channeling the gods and you just like have fun and like party. You know? Our drag is very different, but we're also just like two weirdos who yeah. like are in love with the art of drag and I always love to have a story behind everything I'm doing and so does Pythia and I think that's why we like mesh so well. What's the message of your drag? Like why, why do you do this essentially? For me it's sort of like carrying on these stories of our queer past and how they have always been like erased from us, you know what I mean? And I feel like us existing so publicly now and creating these characters and living these fantasy worlds is such like a testament to all the hard work that had to be done in the past to have the rights that we have today. So honestly, doing drag is kind of like an embodiment of all that power and femininity for me. When I started, like I, I, I literally hated my identity. When I first moved here, I tried to like change my accent up as quickly as I could. I, I, I got people in high school to call me Chris. I didn't want to sound like a foreigner. I wanted to be so much like in line with the Western view because I was like, you know what? No one in Greece would ever have me as I am because I didn't find myself that I fit into that culture in any way. And I was like, ah, uh, okay, I am not Greek anymore. But then I went to university and I discovered theater and drag and with my sort of like religious study background. I started finding out all these queer stories in our culture that I was like, they're, they're never taught in school. They were literally abolished. And femininity as a trait in general was sort of made to feel as inferior. Drag is so important because I get to empower all these silenced women and feminine people or trans people or non-binary people or that have existed in history since forever. Let's not get too political, but you know, even though the conservatives think it's like all new lingo and like new, no, we have always been here, trust me. I had literally, I had done my research and we all have and it's so important that, to carry through that energy through drag and community, so yes. It's so cute. Do you like it? Wow, yeah. The wig, it just always like brings everything together. You're fine. Yeah, it's cute. Should I go like up or I don't know? When I met her in real life, she recognized me. She told me, oh, I'm keeping my eye on you. I haven't told her this, I'm just, like Shivers. embarrassed to say, but I'm like, oh my God, look, it's so crazy. Like it's such a full circle moment. Sasha, can I ask yes. you, what yes. pulled you towards Pythia? I think it's obvious. I'm, I love Pythia's style. Pythia's style of drag and the, the level of detail in every look. Every costume tells a story. It's like one of those things where you feel such a kinship with someone yeah. even though you don't. We, I don't think we've really had a conversation, hardly, yeah, but so we just speak to the, the wavelengths exactly. of drag. Telepathy. So I, I needed to make something happen urgently and for us to do together. <laughs> yeah, they're going to feel it. That's right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. The love. Big lineup outside, so we're just going to see how people are feeling about the show. I'm like very, very excited. It's gonna be my first like big drag show. You know what I mean? Very excited to see Sasha Valera. Thank you. Do you know Pythia? Yeah, yes, we, we do. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. We've seen her, yeah. What do you love about her? Uh, well, like the way the, the, the fact that she's unique. Of course, she's from Montreal Queen. Love her so much.
I mean, I saw her on Drag Race Canada. Yeah. I think my favorite outfit was when she, like, had, like, a double of her. The double head, iconic. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> now, Pythia. We are walking down the runway. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm feeling so beautiful and so stunning. I'm giving sensuality, but also eeriness. I'm so nervous. This will be done in about five minutes. That's amazing. And then just putting my shoes on, and I'm good to go. Oh, gosh. Ready? Um, you good? Yes. Okay. I think we have to put it on the rock so they can reset. Right. Oh, no! history. These light bulbs began to act as artificial moons, confusing moths and overwhelming their senses. Moths can be easily disoriented when a closer light source, like a lamp, comes into view, and their bright lights become almost irresistible. drag artist that I met here that like made me feel like fully comfortable and like made me feel seen and I don't know I just instantly like felt a connection with her she's been like including trans artists in her shows like from the very beginning and this isn't like something new to her so it's just like beautiful to like have this opportunity I I've never been like super serious in my numbers I just kind of like just telling a bit of a story and making people think what it could mean. They can make their own interpretations, they can, you know. <laughs> and thus, the story of the lamp and the moth is one of fatal attraction. I just want them to be like, what the hell is going on? What is in this woman's mind? <laughs> Literally, that's my goal. So now is it like the come down? Is it like the crash? Like how are you, like honestly now I have more energy than ever. So okay. Now after it happens, it's like woo! Whew. My goodness, we did it. Let me tell you, I'm gonna have a really nice sleep tonight. <laughs> yes. I've been thinking about this. The bed is For waiting. The past, like, what? Three months that I've known? I've been thinking about this. Non-stop. So I'm like happy. this show. Yes. So I will sleep really well tonight. <laughs> Let's just say. People now are like, 
walking home from the show. What do you hope that they're carrying with them? Oh my gosh. I hope it's it's like possibilities out there for queer and trans people. We are carving new ways to have success, to build a life, just to look in the world. And I hope that it, it gets people dreaming. What Pithy and I did up there is just the start of something. Maybe it's the first time they've seen queer and trans people like twirling up on the stage. Maybe they've seen lots, but every step we do, I think, can carve a new pathway for someone to come. There has been so much history in the past of like so much queer art and beautiful freedom and expression. And I want them to understand that like it'll go beyond and continue on no matter like what people think. So yeah, and I just want them to be inspired and like, you know, be like, this was so fun. Literally, it was just fun. So yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the basement. <laughs> the issue with the basement. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> All you wanna do is see me turn into you.